In this video, we're going to look at matter and the three different states of matter, solid, liquid, gas. That's about it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first lesson of the semester. Um, we're going to talk about the basics right now, which is basically what we study in chemistry, which is matter. And matter is uh, anything that has mass and takes up space. Okay, so you have to have a mass, you actually have to be something, and you have to take up space. So uh, examples would be like anything that you can see with your eyes, right? The computer that you're looking at, the phone that you're holding in your hand, the, the wobbly kids table that you are working on right now, um, whatever. All of that is made up of matter, right? Uh, things that you cannot see, like the air, okay? Um, bacteria, viruses, okay? Those are things you cannot see, but they are still matter. They have mass, they take up space. Um, common things that are not matter, but always end up as like a trick question or someone accidentally clicks this as matter would be things like energy. Okay, so you're talking like heat, light, although that gets into photons, we can talk about that later. Okay, but a um, question like this, you know, which the following is matter, which the following is not matter, highly missed question, okay, because heat is not, it's not a thing, there's no actual object, it doesn't have mass, it has energy, okay, so steer clear of that common mistake. Um, all right, there are three common states of matter, which would be solid, liquid, and gas, okay, and matter can change between the three states, okay? Easiest thing to think about is like an ice cube can melt into water, water can evaporate into gas. And let's look at them, okay? All right, you are going to get used to my uh, my beautiful drawings here, okay? But hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully they help, okay? So what we're actually gonna be looking at is, you know, imagine this is these are three different beakers, and we're gonna fill them with a solid, a liquid, and a gas. And we're gonna look at a particle model of solid, liquid, and gases, okay? Um, so when, I when we talk about particle models, that means you are actually drawing out particles, right? You're drawing out like circles represent atoms. We'll do more of this later, okay? But if we were gonna draw a particle model of a solid, okay, if you could imagine you had a cup on your desk, okay, and you plunked something into it. You have a pencil and you put the pencil in the cup, okay? If you put it in a cup, it just is gonna go straight down to the bottom of the cup and stay there, right? It keeps its own shape. There's nothing that happens to it. It's not very exciting, okay? Um, so solids have their own shape and they have their own volume, okay? Um, another way to say this is that they have a definite shape and a definite volume, okay? So it doesn't matter if I take that pencil from inside the cup and I put it on the desk, I put it behind my ear, I throw it down the hall, don't do that, okay? But the pencil retains its same shape and same volume. A liquid, okay? If you could imagine if you had a cup and you had like a water bottle and you took the water bottle and you started pouring the water into the cup, okay? The amount of water that you have is not going to change, but the shape that the water takes will, right? The, the water in the water bottle is not going to look exactly like a water bottle when it's in your cup. Okay, so a liquid, if you pour a liquid into a container, okay, it will kind of slush around until it takes up the, the shape of the container at the bottom. So if you notice, right, solid particles are stacked nice and neatly on top of each other, very compact. Liquid particles still pretty close together, but they're not stacked in these nice little rows. Um, you know, they're close, but they're kind of fluid, all right? Liquids 
do not have their own shape. So they take the shape of their container, but they do have their own volume. Okay, so again, if you have your you know 16 ounce water bottle and you're gonna pour that into your cup, you're still gonna have 16 ounces of water. You don't like magically gain or lose water. The amount of volume in there is still the same, okay? Um, but they do not have their own shape, okay? So this would have another way to, to write this, right? So if you're looking like in the book, it'll tell you that it has a definite volume and an indefinite shape. All right. And my cat joined us. How exciting. Marvel says hello. A gas, okay, in order to draw gas particles, you actually need to put a lid on your container, okay? Because if not, the gas will just, you know, uh, move throughout the room, all right? But if you wanted to put a gas into your container, it would spread out and take up the entire shape of the container, okay? So a gas does not have its own shape and it does not have its own volume. So a gas will take the shape and volume of the container that they're in. Okay, so both of these would be indefinite, right? It has an indefinite shape, an indefinite uh, volume. So you can imagine if you had a gas, you can compress that gas. So that's like, and if anyone's ever used hairspray or aerosol or any, you know, anything with basically any kind of aerosol, right? That's a compressed gas. So you can force a gas to be more compressed. You can change its volume, right? So um, gases take the shape of their container and they take the volume of their container, all right? Other things about these three is that, all right, solids, the actual solid particles move very slowly, okay? They are slowly moving particles. They, they like vibrate next to each other. They still move, okay? But they're moving very slowly. A liquid moves slightly faster and a gas moves fast, right? These gas particles are like zinging around everywhere, okay? Um, and obviously you can change from a solid to a liquid to a gas. So if you pretend this is an ice cube, the way to get that ice cube to change from solid ice to liquid water is to heat it up. Right? So it moves slowly when it's colder. The more and more heat you give it, the more energy you give the solid, those particles start to vibrate faster and faster, move around more, and then they kind of spread out and you're getting to this liquid phase. Same thing with liquid, right? You heat it up. Instead of just being kind of this fluid liquid, the more and more you heat it, the faster and faster these particles move and then they're zinging around everywhere and it's become a gas, okay? So that's really all you have to do to move between a solid and a liquid and a gas. That's the basics for the uh, three main states of matter. All right, good luck.